Hey, what's going on, movie and comic fans from around the world? I want to welcome you to my top 10 best comic book movies of all time. Now, I did this video two years ago, and my list has slightly changed. And I wanted to do it again because we had a ton of comic book movies released this year, especially with Thor Ragnarok and Justice League hitting theaters this past November. So what is my top 10? Well, let's get into it. My name is Brennan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey guys, welcome back. I want to thank you so much for tuning in to my top 10 comic book movies of all time video. I really do appreciate it. But before I get into my list, help your boy out. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. Become one of my subscribers and so get all the content that I have to provide. Also, click the bell so you can be notified when I do make uploads. And also, give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. All right. So... I got everything laid out here. Got all my movies. I got my list. Got my water right here just in case I get too excited and I choke. Because if you've been checking on my videos, when I was doing my Thor Ragnarok video, I was so freaking excited by the end of the video. I started choking on camera or whatever and had to sip some water. So I'm prepared this time for that. But this is how we're going to do this. Of course, I have my top 10 uh, comic book movies of all time that I'm going to list for you here tell you a little bit about them and why I feel that they are in my top 10. I also have five honorable mentions that I'm going to mention as well. Um, I have those right here too. Going to tell you why they are in my honorable mentions and why they don't equal my top 10. And also at the very end of the video, this uh, movie has nothing to do with comic books per se. I don't want to tell you it's about because that was spoil it. But what it is, is it is a great film to me that was kind of released underground and it, it was just so great, but it just did not get that much recognition. And I just want to give it a shout out. And so without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into these first five honorable mentions before we get into the top 10. All right, guys, coming in. For my fifth honorable mention is a film that was put out by 20th Century Fox. It came out May 23rd of 2014. It's being directed by Brian Singer. And that is X-Men Days of Future Past. Got this right here on Blu-ray. Uh, I can't remember if 4K was a big thing back then, but I'm going to go ahead and open this up because, you know, I like the uh, the artwork and all that stuff, too, on the boxes. You know, I mean, you, you can you can relate if you're in the comic books and you like collecting movies as I do. I probably should have got that sticker off. But X-Men Days of Future Past. Um, this was a great movie. I really did enjoy it. And to be honest with you, I was going into this with low expectations. I thought I was going to be disappointed with the film because I remember when the trailers were uh, being released, um, they had the uh, the images of Quicksilver and things like that. And, you know, at that time, that was before uh, Avengers Age of Ultron was about to come out. Let me cut this down. I think I'm clipping right here. Um, and, you know, I, I trusted Josh Whedon a lot more and I like what they was doing with Quicksilver. And I was like, man, 20th Century Fox, they don't really know what they're doing. They have a, they hit a, a few home runs here and there. And so I guess they can know what they're doing. But just everything with their Quicksilver looked horrible. But when I saw the movie, you know, I had to put my pride aside and go ahead and admit that it was a good movie because no, it, it wasn't a good movie. It was a great movie. And that Quicksilver scene was the best. Um, but there was still a few issues in that movie that. Um, I did not like uh, mostly because of uh, Peter Dinklage and the way he was explaining why he was going after the mutants and whatnot. You know, there were just some lines and dialogue that really just didn't, you know, add up to me there that when like I couldn't give the film like a perfect 9.5 or 10 out of a 10. Like I will be doing in my uh, top 10 or whatever. And I'm trying to think of the scene. It was like um you know, it was one scene, like an interrogation scene where he was talking to all like the world leaders or something at the beginning. And they were just like, why are you looking for these mutants? You know, they've been in hiding for like 10 or 15 years. And, you know, that it, that scene just wasn't explained a lot. I'm, I'm leaving some things out and I apologize about that because if I have to look it up, we'll be here forever. But it was still a great film. And so that's why X-Men Days of Future Past. Uh, right here is in my honorable mention, but it didn't happen to reach my top 10. Now, this film right here that I'm uh, the next film, my uh, uh, number four, my honorable mentions. This one was uh, this wasn't my top 10 two years ago. 
It was, but we've had some pretty good comic book films since then, and it's no longer in my top 10. A lot of you guys may still have it in your top 10. I know John Campion still has it in his top 10, if you know him from uh, Collider and AMC and uh, the movie blog, and now he's doing his own thing. Uh, But that is Zack Snyder's Man of Steel. Uh, This film came out June 14th of 2013. This was the intro to the uh, DCEU. This is a great film. Um, The story wasn't necessarily perfect because I still remember being a little ticked off at the way that Clark Kent and Lois Lane met in that iceberg. That still doesn't make sense to me, you know, how they met up there, you know, but who cares? But the action in this movie is still just top notch, breathtaking. Uh, It isn't the best action in any comic book movie, but it is the second best action in any comic book movie because when he was fighting Zod at the end and all the other Kryptonians, I mean, like, it was just crazy over the top, and I loved it. I mean, it was so much action that it was nearly exhausting, but I still uh, think this film is great. Unfortunately, it is not in my top 10 anymore, but it got moved to my honorable mentions at number four. All right, guys. My third honorable mention, it came out this year. It was a great film. It didn't make my top 10, but it was close. Uh, The uh, release date for this one was June 2nd of 2017, and they probably gave it away. And that is Wonder Woman. Got that right here on 4K, directed by Patty Jenkins. Love this movie. I thought it was great. Thought the first act was great. Thought the second act was great. But the third act was not as great as the first two acts. You know, it, it dipped down a little bit in the quality. And why I love the and we are talking spoilers. So if you, uh, I am going to be talking. I, I guess I've ruined that for you now. I mean, I'm talking about these other two movies, but um, at the end of this movie, uh, Ares or, or whatever. Like, I like the powers and the abilities, and I like Ares as a comic book character. But I remember in my Wonder Woman review, I was saying that you know that this guy kind of came across as Pee Wee Herman with armor on like i you know the guy that ended up being aries or whatever i just wasn't buying it or whatever and uh the pacing was just a little off you know in the third act as well it was still a great movie the amazons kicked a lot of butt kicked a ton of butt in this movie gal gadot she did a great job as wonder woman and i remember when she was cast i was angry as hell i was like are you serious gal gadot is wonder woman what are y'all thinking this is crazy because when they, she was first cast i was thinking of uh her house uh, uh i think i'm still clipping let me let me cut this down um, I, I still had the images of her in Fast, uh, in Fast and Furious Five or whatever. And in that film, she was just too, th- she was just too slim. She was. I don't have anything against slim women. I love my slim women out there. You know, more power to you. But I'm just saying, okay, like an Amazonian, Amazonian goddess, a demigod of sorts. You know, you got to put a little bit of muscle on you. And she did in this film. She did a great job. So I take all that back. Uh, but it didn't make my top 10, but it, it is still a great film that I love. Of course, I have it on, you know, copy right here on 4K. And so this is my number three honorable mention. Now, the next two may be considered a little controversial. Well, the controversial may be not the word to use, but some of you may be like, oh, my God, these are not in your top 10. What is wrong with you, Brandon? Well, I'm going to explain it. And this one right here, the next one, I'm just looking down because I want to get the actual release date right came out may 6th yeah may 6th of 2016 by joe and anthony russo and that is captain america civil war and yes i love this movie the same guys that are doing avengers avengers affinity war right now one and two also they did uh captain america the winter soldier and um i love this movie it was great that airport scene was super dope i mean I said that Man of Steel has the had the had the number two best action out of any comic book, but Captain America: Civil War has is number one as far as the best action. Like seriously, every action scene in this movie was just off the chart. I loved it. I loved the airport scene. I loved the beginning. I loved the very end when it was uh, Captain uh, Captain America and Bucky versus Iron Man. It, it was great. I loved it. The only reason that this does not make my top 10 is because I like the story. I understand they had to have the Avengers sign the Sokovia Chorus, and I understand Cap's side, and I also understand Iron Man's side, and I was Team Cap. But the villain, Zemo the villain, was weak, and his plan was just dumb luck. 
like we've you know i'm sure we've had these arguments before in comment sections and forums but his his plan it would just it just didn't make sense to me it was just idiotic that there was no way he could have predicted that iron man was going to show up at the end of this movie or whatever and so because you know i you know i'm just not going to be no fanboy i'm like oh my god comment by character ah you know like the story got to make sense too and the story just wasn't bad but it just wasn't as good as other uh, films that i'm about to list and um, you know that's why it didn't make my top ten, but it is my number two honorable mention. And um, yeah, I, I love this film. Now this one right here was super hard. Oh, I I, I debated. I because I, the, the my last honorable mention uh, it was in my top ten two years ago. It, it, this film has been in my top ten for years. It is so damn good. And, but it was just another movie that knocked it out of my top 10. And I, I just have to be fair and put my bias opinions aside. And some of you may just may be screaming like, oh, my God, this is not in your top 10 anymore. And when I list my top 10, I'm going to tell you uh, what film exactly knocked this out of my top 10. But this one came out uh, June 30th, 2004, directed by Sam Raimi. And that is Spider-Man 2. I know, I know, I know, guys. It's it's a great film. I, <laughs> I love it. This is the perfect adaptation of spider-man i love this movie even more than uh, Sp uh not the uh was it spider-man homecoming that just came out this year with um uh, with uh um uh, ah, tom holland or whatever you know but peter parker played by Tobey Maguire and dr octopus and all this i mean since that bank scene where at the beginning when uh dr octopus had taken uh had kidnapped aunt may that was crazy good and then the the subway fight like <laughs> wow i mean like it still holds up today seriously and this right here is actually the extended version or whatever and so that that scene is extended or it's actually extended version or whatever uh but yeah it, it, it there's just a film that that knocked out of my top 10 uh that knocked this out of my top 10 and it, it pains me to say that because i love this film so much like oh spider-man 2 like this is the best spider-man movie ever uh, but unfortunately, it is no longer in my top 10 and it is now uh, my number one honorable mention. All right. Now that we got those out the way, let me let me go ahead and repeat them again. Just real quick. Honorable mentions. We had X-Men Days of Future Past, uh, Man of Steel, uh, Wonder Woman, Captain America, Civil War, and also uh, Spider-Man 2 directed by Sam Raimi. So let me go ahead and put these over here and get these out of the way. All right, now you guys are ready for the nitty gritty. You want to know what the top 10 comic book movies of all of all time are. And I'm going to do 9 and 10 at the same time, okay? Y'all ready? 3, 2, 1. Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice and the Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yes. I love them. No, I'm just joking. I'm <laughs> I have the message, you guys. I'm just kidding. I, that was a joke. There was. A, I don't turn off the video. Probably is some. Probably some of y'all were like, "Hell no! What the hell is wrong with him?" Click. Uh, no, that was that was just a joke. I'm, I'm messing with you guys. Um, yeah, Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice. I do, have, of course, have it right here on 4K because I wanted to see the extended Ultimate Edition, which was better. The three-hour cut was better, uh, but I was so disappointed with the theatrical version. We're not gonna get into why. Uh, but yeah, this was just a joke. So let me go ahead and put that aside real quick right over here. And uh, this film right here was super trash. Man, it sucked. Donkey balls. Like, it was just so bad. And so you're probably asking yourself, well, Brandon, if it sucks so bad, why do you have it on freaking Blu-ray 3D? Well, my friends knew how much I hated this movie. And so they got it for me when, um, they got it for me, like, uh, for, as a gag gift one year, like, for Christmas or something like that. It was It was funny. Um, but also, I, I appreciated the gift too because I, I'm also a collector, and they had a, of movies, and they also had a uh, a ton of special features in this film as well, like the commentary, a bunch of deleted scenes with commentary, and um, you know, music video that I didn't care about, the making of the movie, because um, I was really, really wanted to know what the hell they were thinking when they made this, because I mean, it was just all over the place, you know, the rhino, I'm the rhino, yeah, like. Oh God, Lee! And then that little boy at the end that just—I <sighs> I could talk for days as how crappy this movie is. Uh, but we're not gonna do that. All right, you know we're gonna be serious now. We are gonna be serious. Let me go ahead and move this stack right here. Get that right there. Let me make sure y'all can't see none of the movies. Okay. All right, guys. So all jokes aside, 
<laughs> I'm serious now. We're going to get into this top 10. All right. So, oh, and also, this is in no particular order. So just because I'm saying this is number one or number 10 or number nine or whatever, there's no ranking. Uh, and that would be too difficult for me to say, you know, what's the number one and number 10. These are just my top 10. No particular order. I want to repeat that again. No particular order. Let me fix the mic. Okay. All right. First, uh, coming in. Oh, you probably already saw it. But the first one coming in at um, in my top 10 comic book movies of all time is 2005's uh, Batman Begins. Let me turn the page because I got some notes here as well. This came out uh, in 2005, June 15th of 2005 to be exact by Christopher Nolan. Uh, I remember seeing the trailers for this movie and I'm just like, oh, okay, they're coming out with another Batman movie. Okay, that's going to be pretty cool. You know, the Batman Returns and Batman Forever was trash. And I remember I was I was looking, looking forward to it, but I was not that excited about it. You know what I'm saying? But when I saw it in theaters and when he was just training uh, up in the mountains or whatever, or Raza Ghoul or whatever, I was like, man, this is just freaking amazing. Like, I love this movie to death. Um, so, I mean, I'm pretty sure you love this movie, too. Uh, 2005 Christopher Nolan is a master beast uh, director and writer and he did the hell out of this movie and uh, Christian Bale he did a great job as Batman as well and Bruce Wayne but unfortunately he's not Batman anymore we have Ben Affleck he may not be Batman anymore either but we're not going to get into that but oh yeah uh, Batman Begins 2005 that is the first one in my top 10 now the next movie in my top 10 I'm sure is one that most of you have well some of you may have heard about it, but it wasn't like it didn't make that much money at the box office. It's a shame because um, it's just a great film. Um, I, I really loved it. And that one is uh, it came out August 13th, 2010. Uh, so seven years ago. And that is Scott Pilgrim versus the world directed by Edgar Wright. Um, seriously, guys, if you have not seen this movie, you need to see it. This is like the perfect adaptation of live action video games and comic uh, comic book stuff all bought up into one it is funny it is clever it is self-aware i mean there's just so much to love about this you know edgar wright he did um baby driver which came out earlier this year with um i don't even want to mention his name because you know all the allegations and stuff but uh he had um i forgot the hansel somebody but also jamie fox uh was in this as well john bernthal was in this movie uh, not not in this movie but uh, a baby driver edgar wright also did uh the cornetto trilogy Shaun of the dead at world's end and hot fuzz great movies but he did uh scott pilgrim rest of the world i love this movie uh, i need to watch it again pretty soon because it's just that dope so uh scott pilgrim uh, versus the world that comes in at number nine and again, I'm just saying number nine. I don't really mean it's the ninth. I'm just going on a list or whatever. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, in my top 10. All right, guys. My next one in my top 10 um, comic book movies of all time. Uh, it came out June 3rd, 2011. Directed by Matthew Vaughn. And that is X-Men First Class. To me, in my opinion, this is the best X-Men movie out of them all. Of course, it's in my... Hmm. Do I want to say that? Well, I, X, I was, you know, X Men movie, X Men movie, not X Men characters. And I may have gave you a hint on what's all on my list, but man, uh, this movie is fantastic, man. Like seriously, this rebooted the um, the X Men movies that Brian Singer put together. But then with X Men uh, Days of Future Past, they reconnected it. They didn't have to do that. They could have re they could have just left this rebooted or whatever. But they decided to connect them back with the second one with X Men Days of Future Past. But this movie was just fantastic. I mean, like what I liked about this movie too is because out of when in this X Men movie, this was the first time I felt, in my opinion, that we got to see all the characters use all of their abilities full fledged, like with no holding back. If you go back and look at all the other X Men films, you can be like, why didn't this character do this why didn't this character do that you know why you know why didn't in x-men 3 the last end when Iceman jumped off the the building with uh the i forgot the shadow cat or whatever that could go you know morph the walls why didn't he use an ice bridge and slide down i mean that was the third movie and we don't get a, a ice bridge or whatever you know uh that, it was nothing like that we got to see all the characters in this movie uh, you know, uh, Professor X and uh, Magneto, we got to see their uh, the birth of their relationship. And then at the end of this movie, when they was having that fight on the beach, that was just great. And when uh, Magneto had and when Magneto and Charles had uh, Kevin Bacon's character 
uh, I was going to say Sebastian Stan. Uh, was it Sebastian Shaw? I think I, I can't remember his name. When they had him frozen or whatever, and he flipped that coin through his head, and Charles was like, "No!" And then the camera will cut. No, I mean that's just like brilliant filmmaking by Matthew Vaughn, and I I love this movie. And then we saw Magneto coming out there floating or whatever. It was just uh, oh god, this movie was perfect to me, like a ten out of ten to me. So you know I I love this movie right here, X Men First Class, uh, coming in at number eight again, no particular order. All right, guys, coming in at number seven for my top 10 movies of all time was the movie that started all in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and that is Iron Man 1, which was released May 2nd, 2008 uh, by uh, John Favreau. Of course, uh, John Favreau, I, he first popped on the scene with me, I think in 2005 with Zathura. Of course, he did Iron Man 2, but that sucked. That was the worst in the whole MCU, but that wasn't his fault. I remember like a year prior to that, he was trying to be professional in an interview in April 2009, talking about why we rushed him, blah, 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 blah. Of course, he's going to be doing Lion King, and uh, he did Jungle Book, the live action movie there. Uh, but Iron Man 1, this movie is still flawless to me. I love this movie. Uh, it, is, it is just perfect. I still miss Terrence Howard as War Machine. I love Don Cheeto as War Machine. I mean, I don't. I like Don Cheeto as War Machine, but Terrence Howard, you know, I still wish he was in the role. But you know, that was nine years ago, so he's not coming back. But yeah, this is uh my top ten right here. This was just like the perfect origin story. I mean, Robert Downey Jr. was born to play Iron Man, and he is just doing a hell of a job. And I hope that we get an Iron Man four, five, and six. I mean, we can have an Iron Man four, yeah, five, four, five, and six. I hope we get one. Uh, but yeah, anyway. Uh, coming in at number seven, Iron Man one. All right, guys. So that was a uh, ten, nine, eight, seven. Coming in at number six, and again in no particular order, uh, for my top ten movie, comic book movies of all time. This movie came out early this year. Um, it would, came out uh, March third, two thousand seventeen. Directed by James Mango, and that is Logan, baby. Wolverine, Hugh Jackman is Logan, baby. Yes, this movie is lovely. This movie is great. Got it right here in 4K, baby. Get your copy too. Man, hold up. This movie was off the freaking chain. Like him and X23 was just slicing people up left and right. Uh Professor Xavier did a great job with his acting. Acting was great across the board. The story was great across the board. The action was great across the board. It was nothing wrong with this movie. This movie was like oh man i think i gave this like a 9.5 out of 10 i remember that one part where wolverine had stabbed somebody like and he seemed like he was powering up like oh i was just like oh <laughs> like i was geeking out like that in the theater for this movie logan i mean like seriously this movie is just freaking fantastic y'all um i know you've seen it if you're watching this video i'm probably sure, probably you blah, 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 i can't even talk if you see if you're watching this video i'm pretty sure you've seen this movie or whatever uh but logan yeah that comes in at number six again no particular order for my top 10 comic book movies of all time all right and the next one is a no-brainer um anybody that says this is not in their top 10 comic book movies of all time i know our films are subjective but you don't need to listen to them anymore if they say this movie is not in their top 10 movies of all time and this one came in in 2008 again uh july 18th uh yeah july 18th 2008 to be exact uh, directed by Chris Nolan, and that is The Dark Knight. You know, it's a given. This movie was flawless. I mean, freaking amazing. Don't well, it wasn't flawless. The only thing we didn't like was Batman's voice when he was talking like this. But other than that, I mean, Heath Ledger, rest in peace, man, rest in peace. You know, he he set the bar as far as the villains are concerned in any comic book movie adaptation or just any villain. Period. He set the bar. As far as the villain, I mean, Marvel, they're not the best with their villains. I love I love Kate Blanchett and Thor Ragnarok. She was great and. Loki's pretty cool too. But he Heath Ledger, man, you know, he set the bar with this. You know, that's why he's on the cover. Like every comic book adaptation should they're probably not gonna be able to be as good, but they every comic book movie or every movie that has a villain in it should try to make should aim to make their villain as good and as convincing as uh the performance in this movie. Not saying that they should, they're going to reach it, but they should at least try to. They should be like, okay, hey, you know, is this Heath Ledger Joker good? You know, that's what they should be doing when they're writing the script and the screenplay and stuff like this. But this movie speaks for itself. It's lovely. It's off the chain. Uh, I think it made like $500 million domestically. Um, it is in the billion dollars club, but I think this made even like 500 million domestically. But it's a great movie right here. That's why this comes in at number five in my top 10 movies uh, of all time oh also let me go back logan is the movie that knocked out man of steel so 
because uh, Man of Steel wasn't my top 10 two years ago, but, you know, Logan is better. And so I had to mention that again. Uh, we have, uh, you know, The Dark Knight 2008. So let me make sure. OK, so coming in at number four and this movie right here knocked out Spider-Man 2 out of my top 10. OK, so uh, Man of Steel was in my top 10 and Spider-Man 2 was in my top 10. But Logan knocked out Man of Steel and this movie knocked out Spider-Man 2. Uh, it came out February the 12th of 2016, directed by Tim Miller, and that is Deadpool. Got it right here on Blu-ray. Uh, Ryan Reynolds, uh, he was born to play this role as well. You know, uh, Robert Downey Jr. was born to play Iron Man. Uh, human, I don't want to say, I was gonna say, I said human. I don't want to necessarily say Hugh Jackman was born to play Wolverine, even though he was a, he did a great job. But Ryan Reynolds was born to play Deadpool. I mean, this movie was off the freaky chain. Like, I think I gave this like a 9.5 out of 10, too. I mean, there, there's just everything to love in this movie. It is funny. The action was great, too. And uh, like I said, it was directed by Tim Miller. And this was his directorial debut. Tim Miller never did any other movie before this. That's amazing. Like, seriously. I think he did like two short films before this. So, great movie right here. And I'm also worried because uh, Ryan Reynolds and Tim Miller had a bit of a disagreement as far as the direction that they wanted to go with Deadpool 2, that teaser trailer did just release. There's probably going to be a link for my reaction down in the description box below if you want to check it out. But it was reported, and correct me if I'm wrong, please, in the comment section, that Ryan Reynolds wanted to kind of keep the tone as far as making Deadpool 2 a little more jokey and keep the jokes. And that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But uh, I'm sorry, God, I got to take a swig real quick. Excuse me. I can feel my throat getting uh, parched and uh, dry and all that stuff. But Ryan Reynolds wanted to, like, you know, keep it joking. And Tim Miller, uh, it was alleged or reported that he wanted to have a slightly more serious tone with the plot story and action. And that's good, too. Um, I, I kind of wanted to go the route that uh, Tim Miller wanted to go with because, I mean, I like my jokes, too. And Deadpool is a character that you don't take seriously because he breaks the fourth wall and all that. And to be honest with you, Deadpool is not necessarily a favorite character of mine. I mean... I, I do want to see a Deadpool 2, but if we never got to see another Deadpool movie again, I wouldn't be that upset. I don't know if that makes sense, but like Deadpool was even crazier in the comic books. He was more, he was annoying to me, to be honest with you, but he wasn't annoying to me in this movie. But uh, the person that's coming to direct Deadpool 2 uh, next year in June or 1st, I think, is David Leach. And that really worries me. That this is why I'm saying I'm concerned because now David Leach, because uh, John Wick was co-directed by David Leach and somebody else. I forgot his name. John Wick was great. The first one was great. Part two was a little lacking, but the first one was great. But also David Leach did Atomic Blind, and Atomic Blind was not that good. I think I gave like a five or a six out of ten. I mean, the action in Atomic Blind with the, uh, um, um, Clarice Theron was great, but the story was so damn boring. So you know, he's one for one. You know, like you know, I love. Uh, John Wick, but I didn't care for um, Atomic Blonde, which came out earlier this year. So that kind of worries me that he's going to be handling um, uh, Deadpool 2. I know the action is going to be good because, you know, I really doubt that the action is going to be the worst in the first one. And plus, he's like a stunt director. If you look at his filmography on IMDb, he has a ton of credits in the stunt game. But, you know, anyway, this is number four in my top 10 comic book movies of all time. All right, we got three left. And um, I'm going to go ahead and get into those. Uh, coming in at number three, and again, no particular order that uh, in my top ten, it came out April 4th, 2014, is Captain America, The Winter Soldier, directed by Joe and Anthony Russo. This movie is freaking fantastic as well. I think I saw, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. I think I saw this movie like three times opening weekend. Um, I, I remember it did so well, too, in the box office because it came out in April. And, you know, there was it didn't have that uh, much competition. And kind of three years ago, people are like, oh, April, you know, we're releasing a comic book movie before a comic book season in May. Ooh, but it turned out really good. But um, the villain was great in this. Um, uh, uh, Robert Redford, 
or whatever. And, you know, uh, he was the leader of uh, Hydra. And we found out that Hydra was still, you know, on the scene throughout the world, infiltrating all levels of government and establishments and things like that. So that was like a brilliant villain as a singular person and a group. And then the action was great, too. You know, seeing uh, Winter Soldiers come through and, you know, that scene on the highway, uh, it was great. I love this film. I'm pretty sure you loved it, too. Um, so that's why it is in my top 10 comic book movies of all time. Now, one uh, one of the movies I already mentioned that most people probably didn't even think about their top 10 was, excuse me, uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. This is another one that most people probably forgot about, but it's freaking fantastic. And it also has to do with Matthew Vaughn as well, which came out April 16, 2010, and that is Kick-Ass. This movie is freaking amazing, too. Like, seriously, love this film to death. I saw this twice in theaters. Uh, it, it was perfect. This is... This this isn't Kick Ass uh, Two. It's Kick Ass One. Kick Ass Two was whack because Matthew Vaughn didn't have nothing to do with that. But Kick Ass One, this is literally a realistic superhero movie. I showed this to my mom. My mom liked this movie seriously. And one scene when um, it was after the fire at the warehouse, and then right after that, I remember I was watching this at home with my mom, and she looked at me doing the movie. She's like. Brandon, I can't believe this, but I love the way this story is turning out or whatever. My mom, she don't give a crap about stuff like this. You know, I showed this to a woman I was kind of dating at the time. And I remember at one point, she was like, oh, my God, this is like a realistic a comic book movie. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm glad you like it because I, I, I can see this movie. I can see all these movies I've been listening a hundred times, but I get a high. I really do get a high off of uh, showing movies to other people that haven't seen it and just checking out their reactions. And uh, this kick-ass movie based off a comic book is lovely. It's great. So, uh, you know, it comes in at number two. Again, no particular order in my uh, top ten comic book movies of all time. All right, guys. And let me not waste any more time. Let me go ahead and, uh, excuse me, uh, get to the last one. Came out May 4th, 2012. Uh, it was a culmination of the MCU. And it is Marvel's The Avengers, directed by uh, Josh Whedon. Uh, this is a given right here. I mean, of course, you're going to like this movie. Well, if you don't, that's fine. But, you know, oh, I forgot I had a little hologram there. I think. Look at look at Iron Man going like, the, oh, dude, I, I got my little red on too. But no, seriously, uh, Marvel's The Avengers. The only thing that didn't, I didn't give this a perfect 10 is because I wanted more Hulk at the end. I wanted the end battle to be a little bit longer. And also, towards the middle of the film, when it didn't make sense to me how Loki knew all the secrets on how to destroy the Avengers. That was not explained well in the movie. Now, he did get that information from Hawkeye, but that information is in an extended scene in the uh, extra special features in this movie. They should have included that in the movie or whatever because it just would have made a lot more sense. I still gave this like a 9 out of 10 or a 9.5 out of 10. It's great. I love this movie. Uh, you know, The Battle of New York. You know, this this is great right here. Much better than Iron Man. Not Iron Man, but uh, Avengers 2. But this one, uh, top 10. Um, yeah, last one in my top 10 comic book movies of all time. So let's recap real quick. Um, number t or number one, number 10, it doesn't matter, is Marvel's The Avengers. Uh, number nine is Kick-Ass. Number eight is Captain America, The Winter Soldier. Seven is uh, Deadpool. Six is The Dark Knight, Christopher Nolan. Five is Logan. Uh, four is Iron Man 1, John Favreau. Uh, three is X-Men First Class, directed by Matthew Vaughn. Two is Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. You need to see this movie. You, you're, I'm serious. You need to see it. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, uh, Edgar Wright. And then last but not least is Batman Begins 2005, Christopher uh, Nolan. So there we go, guys. That is my top 10 comic book movies of all time. Uh, it really did pain me to knock out Man of Steel, especially uh, Spider-Man 2. But, you know, Logan came out and Deadpool came out. And I do like Logan and Deadpool more than Spider-Man 2 and Man of Steel. So, um, you know, I got my honorable mentions out the way. I got my top 10 out the way. I kind of joke with you guys a little bit. And now I have this little gem right here that just really didn't see the light of day. Um, I love this film. It was um, the budget for it was only four million dollars, and I'm I'm being serious, guys. I'm not joking. The budget for this was four million dollars. Um, it was based off a video game, and um, it's just a shame that they um, that it just didn't get it just um, it didn't get that much attention because it came out. Uh, 
in 2014, May of 2014, it was directed by Joey Ansa. Now, if you don't know who Joey Ansa is, if you've seen the Born Ultimatum, the third Born film, when uh, Matt Damon was in that building uh, and that guy with that assassin was chasing him, and then they had that shot where they jumped through the window and the camera was following them, and then he had that martial arts scene in that room and they was kicking and flipping and punching, and, one, and Matt Damon beat the guy with books. He like threw a book on his neck and hit the book. That's Joey Ansa or whatever. Uh, where, okay, yeah, May, uh, May 23rd, 2014. And that is Street Fighter Assassin's Fist. Um, now, this debut, like I said, May, it was a 12 episode miniseries. Uh, each episode was about 12 min 10 to 12 minutes long. So it ended up being like a two hour and 30 minute or 30 some minute movie when you cut all the scenes together. And it debuted on YouTube on the Machinima YouTube channel. Now, I don't know if you can still go on Machinima and watch it. They probably took it down now. But, um, you know, you can either go on Amazon or go somewhere and buy the uh, the, the uh, DVD or Blu-ray. Also, if you go on the Facebook, you can go to the Facebook page for this Street Fighter Assassin's Fist and like the uh, like the Facebook page because, you know, I, I, I do want this movie to do well and get more attention because... Like all the reviews were stellar. They was great. And if you go back and look at all the comment sections for this, everybody loved it. This is seriously the best adapted uh, video game ever because this is the coming of age story of Ryu and Ken. It shows Ryu and Ken as young boys uh, training in the dojo in Japan. And it shows them growing up all the way to their, their teenage years to their lower 20s or whatever. It's the true origin story of Ryu and Ken and it's great. And there's even uh, an origin story of their fighting style, uh, the Assassin's Fist or the Satsuken or whatever. It shows them doing the, the Shadow Ken, the Tatsumaki Kenbukik, the uh, the Hadouken, uh, the Shoryuken, uh, you know, the Rising Uppercut. I forgot the name of that. All of that. It, it has to do with their master and then their older master. It goes back and it, it, it delves into all of that. And it's dope as hell. Uh, the fighting is great. The action is great. The story is great. The acting itself is not the best, but okay, you know, it's not horrible, but it's not like, you know, A-list worthy or whatever. But, um, you know, here's the, well, here's the cover. Make sure you can see that real world. Street Fighter Assassin's Fist. Um, and you might be saying, like, because cause they show uh, Ryu's uh, white headband because he had a white headband before he had a red one because Ken gave him the red one. You see Ken has the long hair before it was cut. Uh, this is the back. That's, uh that's Akuma right there, played by um, played by um, um, Joey Ansa himself. And just look at some of the the the, the pictures here, and the hot oak and all of that. I mean, like seriously, guys, this this was great here. Um, it was divided up. You could at the time it was released, you could watch like all twelve episodes back to back to back. But to be honest with you, it played better episodically or in episodes or whatever but when they cut it all together the editing didn't flow as well and they probably could have cut out 10 more minutes or something like that but you know i, I really want this guy to, a joey answer to get more money because it cost him four million dollars to do this and you know it just didn't a lot of people just they knew it came out but a lot of people was like yeah i'm not interested and people was like no it's good i wasn't interested either but i saw it and it was good you know so pay attention to it i, I really it's just really sad that this movie here didn't didn't uh you know get that much attention but you know guys anyway i've been talking for over about 38 minutes right now so guys that is my um uh, you know little thing i wanted to you know shine some light on gave you my honorable mentions and that is my top 10 comic book movies of all time that is just my opinion guys what did you think what is your top 10 comic book movies of all time what was in your honorable mentions if you have one you know do you um do you agree with me do you disagree with me you know, did I turn you on? Did I turn you off? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't like the video, that's fine. Just get leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this video on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Become one of my subscribers so you can get all the content that I have to provide. Also, guys, click the bell so you can be notified when I do make uploads. Also, guys, go to my website. Check me out there at justmyopinion.net. Bookmark it. I do have written reviews for all the latest films. I would appreciate it. And, guys, you can also look me up on social media. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All the good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen. And I made it very easy by providing a link to all the good stuff there in the description box below. 
But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review of my top 10 comic book movies of all time. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Bernie Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.